Yeah, some of those boss suggestions that he gave, um, one of them specifically said, you know, if you are cursed, do not curse back. If you are struck, do not strike oh, back. Mm -hmm. Turn the other cheek, right? Basically, that incredibly high um, moral lesson that, again, that Jesus gave. Turn the other cheek. How many of us could do that? Not a lot. Huh? Wasn't there one, like, where it was, if you're... If your relative is, or your friend is being attacked, don't do anything either. Right. If somebody you're with on that bus is being attacked, then don't do anything it's back. Just fun. sit there. What should you do, Tom? Uh, just stand. But don't do anything. Well, pray for the oppressor. Pray for the oppressor. Guys and girls, check this sheet out. Alternative to violence. Here he breaks it down really in five sections. Section number one. First, this is not a method for cowards does resist. This nonviolent movement that we're going to use here in this new war on the streets, it does resist. Number two, a second point. A second point is that nonviolent resistance does not seek to defeat or humiliate, humiliate the opponent, but to win his friendship and understanding. To win his friendship and understanding. Remember those five speakers you guys across this wrote a big paper on? Yes. Who most does that resemble? Washington. Booker T. Washington. I win the white man's friendship and understanding. Don't fight hate with hate, but use love. Look at the third point. Third characteristic of this method is that the attack is directed against forces of evil rather than against persons who are caught in those forces. It is evil we are seeking to defeat. He's going real deep here. He's going incredibly deep and profound. And he's saying, it's not so much this person over here that's it's abusing you, that's cursing you, that's lynching you. It's the force within them that we're trying to defeat. The force of evil. Wow. Look at the fourth point. The fourth point that must be brought out concerning nonviolent resistance is that it avoids not only external physical violence, but also internal violence of spirit. At the center of nonviolence stands the principle of love. If you have a hard copy, please underline that. If you're looking at that in your iPad, note that in some way. Again, that one sentence, powerful. At the center of nonviolence stands the principle of love. A little bit further along. To retaliate with hate and bitterness would do nothing but intensify the hate in the world. Don't fight hate with hate. Fight hate with love. Profound, beautiful, and powerful. Look at the next paragraph down. This is even more important. It means understanding, redeeming goodwill for all men, an overflowing love which seeks nothing in return. It is the love of God working in the lives of men. When we love on the agape level, we love men not because we like them, not because their attitudes and ways appeal to us, but because God loves them. So all these people that are oppressing us, all these people that are holding us back, all these people that are lynching us, they are all God's children. And we have to love them. They have a force of evil inside of them, but that's what we're seeking to defeat. Not the individual white person that is holding us back and lynching us, but that person is a child of God too, and that's what we're seeking to defeat, that evil inside the person. What do you guys think of this? Think about your worst enemy in your world for whatever reason, somebody that's done you great, great harm. King is saying, love that person. Fight that hatred and fight that that evil that they've done to you with love. Yeah. It's hard to do, right? Tom? Yeah. It, it sounds really hard, rough. Almost impossible. But that's why we studied specifically this history, the civil rights movement, because it gets worse from this point and it continues to get worse. And this method of nonviolence, oh, it works. It works. Let me show you another picture. Some of you might have seen this before in another history textbook or another class. What do you notice about this picture? Any observations? Um, I'm gonna guess this is like her kind of like immigrant school or something. Um, and 
and those are like all the parents, like they're all yelling at her. She's like ignoring them and just keep walking. Okay, good. Yes, this is school integration. Two years after Montgomery Boss Boycott in Little Rock, Arkansas, the school started to get integrated. What else do you notice? What else? What else? Hunter? That police in the background to kind of Good. Yeah, those are not policemen. Those are actually Arkansas National Guard. So what happened here? The, the, the young black girl is Elizabeth Eckford, and she is one of nine black teenagers that went to integrate Little Rock Central High School. Little Rock Central High School, I believe, had about 2,400 students, all of them white. And now it was time to really break down segregation in the schools. And in 1954, the Supreme Court ruled in Brown versus Board that school segregation is, is, is illegal. You can't have that. So now these nine black kids, your age, sophomores and juniors and seniors, stepped up and said, yeah, we'll, we'll put our, literally put our lives on the line and we'll integrate the school. And this is the first day of school. And Elizabeth Eckford did not have a phone in her home. And she didn't get the word that the other eight students were going to go together. The other eight students did go, but they were turned away. The Arkansas National Guard was lining the school. The governor of the state put soldiers, state soldiers, and they lined them around the school and they said, do not let these black kids in the school. And she showed up on her own and met hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of angry white people. And they were going to lynch her. They, she says that I heard calls in the crowd that the string her up by a tree. You see some pretty angry people there. The guy in the hat, he's not a high school student. Right? He's old. People came from, from all around Little Rock, all around Arkansas, all around the different states to stop this from happening because this was another battle on the front of segregation and breaking down. So Elizabeth Eckford is an interesting character, and you're going to see her in the clip I'm going to show you in just a couple minutes. you got to look really closely, but there's video cameras on the scene, and they're capturing it as well, too. Do you notice anything else? Anything else we can call out? Observe here, this picture. Uh, well, it seems like there's some, like, white people not watching angrily. Like, Specifically, that guy in the white shirt? Cool. Um, yeah, and, like, the lady who next to her, you can see them better in the last picture, but they're not, like, yelling or anything. They're not, like, smiling either, but they're not, like, doing anything that's, like, really easy. I don't want to, which I'm going to call you out and I'll go back. I would hate to see these emails in a dark alley somewhere. Yeah. These are bruisers. Look at these tough women. <laughs> right? Yeah. So even though they're not screaming at her, man, it looks good kill. But right? there, they but yeah, there is that guy in the back who's smiling. Yes, 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 yes. The guy you can see is that was Yeah, he's having a good time. Remember when we talked about lynchings? This was almost an entertainment for people. And this was very, very close. The really, really angry white one, her name is Hazel Bryan. And Hazel Bryan, believe it or not, called up Elizabeth Eckford way, way later in life and out of blue, apologized to her and said, I'm really sorry. I know that my picture and her picture is captured and it's going to be in history forever. But she sincerely apologized to Elizabeth Eckford. I want to give you guys and girls a reading before we watch the film. It's interesting to know as I'm setting it up, just read the first part of this read, the photo. It's interesting to see what happens to Elizabeth in the next couple minutes after this picture. Grace Lorch is 
another kind of lost figure to history that plays into this, definitely. Um, again, Little Rock Nine history.